Hello chess fans, this is Rick from Chess to Impress with a highlight from round 5 of the 2023 Tata Steel Masters Tournament. We're going to look at the final moves of the game between Magnus Carlsen with white and Nodderberg up to Sotarov with black. We see we have a Queen's Endgame on the board, the fourth phase of chess. We have the opening, we have the middle game, we have the end game, and then we have the Queen Endgame. Queen endgames are very complicated. As we see, black has an extra pawn, so Abdus Satabrov is playing for a win against the world champion. He has just given a check on e2 on, more for, on move 43, and Carlsen went to g1 here with the king. The Grandmasters commentators that I followed were surprised that Carlsen did not try to go to h3, because it's going to be very likely that this will be a queen endgame with the b pawn still alive. And if the b-pawn wants to go to b1, then the place for the king to be, for the white king to be, is on g7 or h7. The reason for that is that it will then be much more difficult for black to respond with a white check with a black counter check. A check and a counter check that would then get the queens off the board and then in most cases the king and pawn endgame is then a win for black. That's why the white king wants to go up the board to g7 and h7 as far away from the action as possible to avoid those counter checks. Carlsen of course knew that, but he went to g1. He probably thought there was no way to get all the way up the board. And he was correct. Abdu Satoros said something similar in his interview after the game. Queen e5, a very nice move from Abdu Satoros. Centralizing the queen, making it very difficult for white to give lots of checks. Let's put the next few moves on the board. Black starts to run with the b-pawn. Pass pawns must be pushed, also in queen endgames. And g4, that swaps the last couple of pawns. And now we have that b-pawn still alive. b4, one step closer to do promotion. And black is bringing the king up. Check, king g3, another check. And the pawn makes one more move on move 53. Now white starts the checks. King c4, queen g8 check, king c3. The black king is going to hide behind the pawn and the queen. Another check and king d2. Queen h8 from Carlsen and that is covering the b2 square. If it was white to play again, he would play queen b2 check, and suddenly it's a draw because there's a perpetual like this. And you cannot interpose the queen with black because then the b pawn falls off the board with check. And that's why Abdusatarov played king c2 on this move, move 57. Another check. You have to be very patient in queen end games. King d1. Queen back in the corner, Queen d2 check, and the Grandmasters in the live broadcast thought that White should now go to the bottom rank, but Carlsen went to the third rank, and after b3, b2, he resigned. Why did he resign? You and I would still try and play on, I'm sure. Well, let's look at a few variations, and then we understand why Carlsen resigned here. If we try to give a check from h1, that won't work because of, indeed, the check and the counter check. White has to swap the queens and the b pawn promotes. What else can we try? We can try a check from h5. Then the king goes to c2. And if we try another check, for example from f5, then we see the counter check again. The queens come off the board and the b pawn promotes. Let's try something else after queen h5 check, king c2. We can also give a check from c5, but that won't help. Queen c3 check also gets the queens off the board. And now we understand why that king, that white king, really wanted to be on g7 or h7 to avoid all these wins for black. What else can we try after b2? Well, we can cover the promotion square with queen h7. Then there is queen c3 check, and you cannot go to the fourth rank because then there is queen b4 check, and that covers the b1 square. The king plays, and black has a second queen. 
Let's try something else. After queen h7, queen c3 check, let's go to the second rank instead of to the fourth rank. Well, then we have that same move again that we saw a few times now. Queen c2 is check and offering a tra trade of queens. The queens come off the board and the b-pawn promotes. So now we understand why Magnus Carlsen resigned after b3, b2. A big win from Nordebeck up to Sartorov in his first classical game against the world champion, winning with the black pieces. For Carlsen, it was the first time since Norway Chess 2015 that he lost two games in a row. Back then in the first round against Veselin Topalov, he lost the game on time in a winning position. But this time he was twice outplayed and it will be very interesting to see how Carlsen recovers from these blows. Up to Sotarov in the meantime is leading the tournament with three and a half points out of five games. Round six will be played on Friday the 20th of January and I will be here after the round with a highlight. I hope you liked this video and that if you did you give it a thumbs up that you subscribe to the Chess to Impress channel and that you leave a comment. I will read them all and I will reply to them all. If you liked the video it would be great if you could share it on social media by clicking the share button on YouTube. You can find me on Instagram, on Twitter and on Facebook. This is Rick for Chester Impress. Thank you for watching.